Welcome to Paradigms at Paradigms.life. Hi, I'm Baruch, host of Paradigms. Welcome to the show. Thanks for tuning in. Paradigms is here to bring you inspired, inspiring people with visions of a viable future for life on Earth that includes humans. My guests on this episode are two musicians who have just made some wonderful music that speaks to the plight of migrants. We humans have always traveled around, and lately it's become really politicized and a lot of people are getting hurt as a result. So we'll be talking about the music, about the issue, and much more. Let's meet them right now on this episode of Paradigms. Itamar Erez and Amin Onari, welcome to Paradigms. Thank you. Uh, Itamar, it's welcome back. Thank you very much. You two have just collaborated on a really wonderful suite of music called Migrant Voices, and it's mostly or maybe entirely improvised, but I'm, I, I have lots of questions about it. Uh, but just wanted to say I listened to it a few times. It's very moving. It's very beautiful. Uh, it really takes one in. So I want to ask you guys about this music and how you came to do this collaboration and the meaning of this, because it's obviously very meaningful. Yeah, well, we um, lived in the same city a few years ago. I moved to Vancouver 2015, and shortly after that, we met and started uh, collaborating, uh, playing together in different projects, different... I mean, was uh, a few time guest with, uh, with my ensemble, yes. and then we did a bunch of duet uh, concerts and uh, some trios, correct? So, you know, we were collaborating and, w and working together uh, and we also lived uh, nearby. So we would just hang out and just have a, a lot of fun uh, together. Just recently, the, op uh, the opportunity to record uh, something came up and yeah, we, we did it. <laughs> yeah. Musically, I think uh, we come from very different backgrounds. Itamar plays a lot of jazz and actually if you sneak in on him rehearsing he plays everything when he's alone like he'll be practicing Bach he'll be practicing classical jazz everything I come from a per mostly like a Persian classical background but I think one thing we share is a lot of um, uh, the ability to improvise uh, so in a lot of our sessions we'd get together and kind of just like you know play and improvise but kind of not just like random improvisations kind of like building on ideas and stuff like that and it developed into this something i'm really proud of and happy with i figured there had to have been themes you started mm. with that you brought with you into the studio and then riffed off of and developed and so i'm curious about those and the inspiration uh, some of the ideas were developed i think in the studio we had a few days there and we just play together and then kind of build off an idea there. Tomorrow you probably would remember better than I would. <laughs> yeah, I think it, it, at first we played uh, some of my compositions. You know, it's interesting preparing for the recording. I, I went to Montreal for a few days where we were, were supposed to rehearse uh, the material uh, towards the recording. Soon after, you know, it became kind of clear that this is going to be an improvised uh, concept because uh, there is something really beautiful that happens uh, musically between us when we play that's very hard to pin down and make it something else. It's really unique. Yeah, it, it took a bit of courage. Uh, I, I mean, uh, for me, uh, it's the first time that I go into uh, a recording studio and we had one piece, basically, uh, Migrant Voices that we knew before, that we practiced and we, we played before. And then we had two days to just play whatever. For me, this is uh, the first uh, time that I do that. Those two days just went by like so quickly. And, and then, uh, you know, usually after I record, 
I need some time off, uh, you know, to clear my mind. And I remember a few few months later, uh, opening the sessions and starting to listen, it was like, wow, like this is so great. We have to release it. Most of the time when we listen to music, it's not improvised. It's composed. It's arranged. Uh, this is what people are accustomed to. It's how people often think of music. As humans, we improvise all the time. We improvise when we have a conversation. We make it up as we go. Musical improvisation I'm really interested from both of your points of view on how that's different as an experience from music that is composed and arranged. Well, for me, it's a lot like you said, it's like the exactly like that conversation because we had like a barrier between us, but we could see each other. You know, the improv is going well when you can look at each other and kind of get like a facial reaction. It's like you're having a conversation. There's, there's no words being spoken but it's creating, you know, that interaction that you would have when you see like a friend on the street or something like that. Or it also kind of tells a story. You're like, oh, where's this going now? Oh, what's going to happen here? There's a lot of different feelings that happen that you wouldn't have with like a piece that's composed because you know exactly where that piece is going to start and where it's going to finish. So this is, I think, a little more exciting for me. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, for me, both, uh, you know, both are exciting. It's exciting to play in the mo moment and just see what happens. And, you know, if when I play a note or a phrase, uh, then Hamin responds to it and takes it somewhere. And then I respond to that. It's it's really exciting kind of kind of thing. And um, also uh, something that I've done uh, a couple of times uh, in my life is taking improvisation and then making uh, a composition out of it. There was one tune in the album that we we kind of we started uh, playing like improvising, and there was a very kind of clear um, rhythm and melody that just showed up. So you know we played that uh, a few minutes of that, and then we said, okay, we should uh, revisit. Uh, this theme and this rhythm and we we talked a lot about it a little bit and I, I think we rec ended up recording seven or eight tracks something like that of the same material trying out different things uh, so that's a kind of an unusual track I think in the album it started as an improvisation and became like a, like a theme and, and when you're improvising I mean there's that conversation part that Hamin was talking about that we've talked about but then there's the internal, what generates the music, which is a great mystery, really. I mean, you know, I always ask people, where does the music come from? And they always say, I don't know. You know, it, it, it comes. <laughs> I guess what I'm getting at and what I'm finding interesting and wanting to sort of take from this and be able to apply elsewhere is the idea that being in the moment creates incredible opportunity to have rich experience, you know, and we talk about being present and th these are all words we've heard a lot and it's part of our culture now to think this way and and people focus on being more present i mean this is a good thing and in creativity and with music and with art it's a moment if it weren't recorded it would be gone and there's something beautiful about that too yeah absolutely yeah yeah well put yeah i i totally agree it's uh, it's 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 beautiful as as I said, for me, it's uh, it was the first time doing something like that. So exciting, very exciting. You know, I improvise a lot, um, you know, on my own or, or with other people, and then I get some ideas with it from it yeah, or inspiration. So. But I I never went to the recording studio and started improvising and. <laughs> so that, it's like sharing something very personal, I think, too, especially because yeah. a lot of people do practice like this and. Uh, you could be kind of hesitant when you come when you share it because it's a moment like you said it could disappear and it happens so many times where you could practice something you like how the way it sounds you never recorded it but you never really meant to share it you know with however many people are going to listen to it if you post it online but that was kind of i think the big uh hesitation with this like we we recorded it we like it are we do we want to release this do we want to uh you know is this something we want to share yeah, so it circles back to that kind of that moment and who's the moment for and how do you share it and how are people going to respond to it? And I'm glad that it seems to be positive up until now. 
It's interesting uh, also the era that we're in where we can actually record uh, record stuff like that. Uh, I'm, I'm listening to a lot of uh, at the moment podcasts about um, music in the Renaissance and even before where musicians were improvising a lot and there was no way to really record it. Uh, I mean, Bach was an improviser and... Uh, But, you know, just writing your own improvisation is, it's very, very limited and, um, and uh, we have the, you know, the possibility to record it, and, which is uh, amazing. I'm talking with Itamar Erez and Hamin Onari about their new album, Migrant Voices. And we just heard a bunch about how they make the music and their history with each other and There's more to come of that conversation. Let's hear the first track from the album, Migrant Voices. It's called Departure, and then we'll be back with more conversation. Itamar Erez and Hamin Honari. You're listening to Paradigms at Paradigms.life. Thank you. 
That was the first track on the album Migrant Voices from Itamar Erez and Hamin Honari, Departure. Now we're going to get back to my conversation with Itamar and Hamin, and then we will listen to a couple of more tracks, including the title track, Migrant Voices. For anyone who's ever been a traveler, who's ever lost a home or gone seeking one, this is all for you. Here's the next part of our conversation. Migrant voices, the meaning behind that, your thoughts about that, what you're expressing mm -hmm. about, you know, right now in the world. I mean, humans have always traveled. It's what we do. We go to new lands. We bring material things. We bring ideas. We learn. We exchange. This is how cultures grow and develop. Otherwise, everything gets, you know, breathing the same air. Right now, we see all of this fear-mongering and uh, territorial behavior. And, you know, there are folks who are not comfortable with all of this moving around and people leaving their designated area mm -hmm. to a point where, you know, there's violence and there's hate and there's, you know, really some people behaving very badly, let's say, about this thing, which is part of humanity. So I'm just interested in your thoughts about making music about migrant voices, what they're saying. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe I share, I'll share um, when I when I started uh, um, writing, or you know, it, again, it came from improvisation, the tune uh, Migrant Voices. I felt like it came almost like as a, um, uh, as a complete thing. And I felt like, uh, you know, someone was whispering to my ear, uh, like a melody from somewhere in the world. There is a lot of influences in the music there of some Turkish or Balkan or Middle Eastern music. And um, I felt, um, yeah, that music is in the air somehow. And you just need to be really sensitive to to hear it, receive it. And, and I don't know where it came from. And, and yeah, and it, it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, we are both uh, immigrants. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's not an easy um, experience, uh, I, I think, and, you know, not to, not to have a home. Uh, you know, I, I definitely miss that. But it's also a choice. You know, I, I feel like I, uh, I am a citizen of the world, more like I, I more just, you know, I don't feel that a certain part of the earth belongs to me or to someone else. Uh, so there is also a certain kind of freedom uh, with that choice. But uh, I would say that um, I thought it was a great piece to uh, include in this project and uh thank you Itamar for sharing it sure. um we also agreed on the name um for the album just because migration can also lead to a lot of uh beautiful exchanges you know when people from different backgrounds meet and uh you know anywhere it's really it comes down to the people not so much the places you can have a group of people start a new conversation and learn so much from each other or create something completely new. It's like a kind of creating a new path. And one thing that's great about uh, being in Canada is this opportunity to uh, interact with so many different people, learn new things and really explore new grounds for music, for art, for whether it's food, everything. And uh, it's exciting. I think this has always been happening in different parts of the world. But uh, right now in this place, I think it's, uh, it's a great opportunity. I agree. Well, yeah. I'm talking with Itamar Erez and Hamin Onari about their music and their new album, Migrant Voices. Here is the title track.
just heard Embrace, and before that, Migrant Voices, from the album Migrant Voices by Itamar Erez and Hamin Onari. You know a bit about how this music was made, you know about the inspiration. I hope just hearing the music is giving you an experience. Here's the final part of my conversation with Itamar Erez and Hamin Onari. This is Paradigms at Paradigms.life. I mean, I want to ask you about something. So typically yes. percussion in Western music is to establish a rhythm that extends through the piece and kind of provides a ground. Mm-hmm. You're doing something different. Yes. Yeah, so I, I think that comes from my background in Persian music where the rhythm, it's a lot more fluid. Like you can have a phrase and it could be counted in six beats, but not every beat isn't always the same. You can have like one beat a little shorter, one a little longer. You can, you know, stretch, pull and pull, but in the end you end up like on, on a downbeat somewhere. And a lot of the pieces I play an instrument called the tombak, which is um, the Persian, it's like a goblet drum. And it has like a very, you know, just like dead sound. It doesn't have a lot of like sustain or anything. And the way we play it is we use all 10 fingers to, create like a lot of rolls and stuff. And you can create these dynamic rolls that can kind of weave in and out of the melodies. It's almost like, you know, without playing pitches, it's almost like a melodic instrument. And it's very, it's a very expressive drum, but it's not too much that it gets in the way of the music. So it's kind of like a very unique approach to percussion. I think we use it a lot. You'll have like an hour of improvised music and the tomba can improvise just as well as any of the uh, melodic instruments. So I think it's a great addition to like, you know, Western styles of music where you're, we're always used to having like, you know, a steady beat and yeah, it's, it's fun and challenging at the same time to incorporate it into this kind of music. Well, and as a listener, when you're experiencing that very different kind of rhythm performance, it immediately takes you to a new place because it's not what you're used to. So for people who aren't used to that, they get <laughs> to have a sense of discovery because it's something new, which I think is really good for humans. We need to be in a state of discovery often. It, it keeps us present. <laughs> yeah. And, and yeah. younger. Right. <laughs> I'm reading a little bit about uh, Leonardo da Vinci and uh, how he had such, uh, you're talking about discovery. He was so curious about everything. But so so many different things, you know, like really uh, astonishing curiosity for life, you know. He's a great example of what humans can do if we allow ourselves to be curious. I mean, he invented things that we didn't revisit for hundreds of years later, like how to fly. You know, I mean, I agree with you. I think curiosity is it's one of our good qualities. So this music... It's out there. People are hearing it. What kind of responses are you getting? And are you performing together at all? So far, responses were great. And we have uh, quite, a, quite a lot of uh, fresh reviews uh, in different magazines and a lot of people who are excited about us. All over the world, too. Getting a lot of uh, feedback from uh, friends in Iran who are listening to it. Oh, really? Enjoy, enjoy it. Cool. Yeah. It's great. I'm happy that it's finally out. We're hoping to do some more later this year. We used to be like neighbors, so we play together all the time. It was like a five-minute walk, but now we're on different sides of the country, so we play together less, but uh, hoping to do so more. This is happening. This music is out. What else are you guys up to individually? I mean, now, I mean, you're in Montreal, which is a very dynamic and exciting city and full of different cultural influences. And it's Mario, you're in Vancouver, which is also a really great city. I mean, those are two wonderful, wonderful places. But what are you each up to nowadays? I'm in a number of different projects. I play uh, mostly in Montreal with a group called Constantinople, which um, tours a lot. They explore a lot of different like um, early and world music styles. And another project called Les Arrivant, which is coming to uh, Portland, August. If you're around there, it would be nice to see you. Yeah, so August, I think. Yeah, a lot of different projects. And uh, I go back to Vancouver a lot to play with uh, groups that I have there. I am, so I have I have a trio and quartet. So um, I have several gigs coming up and um, 
we're playing at the jazz festival in Vancouver, uh, June 22nd. And we're playing in the States, um, in Bellingham at the jazz center there. And I have a solo show in San Francisco and in the end of, uh, September, hoping to start working on some new music. Uh, I got, uh, I received a grant from the Canada Council for the Arts, which actually also supported this uh, project to write something for my trio with a um, string quartet. So I'm supposed to uh, start working on that pretty soon. I really enjoyed the music and it made me go back and listen to uh, some of your other music, uh, Mia Alegria which is also a really wonderful record and is is not just you and a percussionist. It's got a whole lot of other stuff going on. I like to start out my day listening to music. It helps make the rest of the day good or at least better. And so this was a great way to start my day was with Migrant Voices. Oh, thank you. Thanks so much for having us. Before we wrap up the show, I thought it would be great to listen to a couple of tracks from Itamar and Hameen that are not from the Migrant Voices album. So we're going to do that, and then I'll be back to close out the show. Starting out with something from The Purity of Desire, Ivo Perlman, Gordon Gardina, and Hameen Hanari. This is called Music of a Distant Drum. Thank mm-hmm. you. 
Itamar Erez with Catch Me If You Can, and before that we heard Music of a Distant Drum, Amin Onari with Ivo Perlman and Gordon Gardina. I really enjoyed the conversation with Itamar and Hamin. Thank you both so much for talking with me, for coming back to the show, Itamar. Right now, I'm a traveler. Right now, I'm moving around and don't have an actual home in one place. And while I'm doing it, knowing that there are people who have my back and with places to land, I understand a little bit about how psychologically not knowing where your home is is both exciting and can be unsettling. When you're in that situation under great duress, with violence at your back, and nowhere to land that you know of, that's got to be very, very hard. Imagine doing that with small children. So maybe one of the things we can all do is to think about migrants just as people who are in motion, who need to be able to land somewhere safe and secure. And in this world, safety sometimes is an illusion, but maybe we can provide some of this for each other with kindness. So to anyone who fears the traveler, the migrant, please think about the fact that these are just people living their lives, raising families, doing their best, and sometimes under great and dangerous duress. If you'd like to know more about this music, Migrant Voices, you can go to Itamar Erez's website. It's Itamar Erez, I-T-A-M-A-R-E-R-E-Z dot com slash migrant hyphen voices. And you can learn more about Hamin Anari by going to constantinople.ca and clicking on musicians. Wonderful talking with you guys. Thank you so much. If you enjoyed this episode of Paradigms, I hope you'll visit the Paradigms website, paradigms.life, where you'll find all of our episodes archived going back to 2009. And at the bottom of that page, you'll also find a link to my latest project, an audiobook of Khalil Gibran's The Prophet, narrated by Starhawk. All right, I am going to leave you with one more track from Migrant Voices. It's called Dancing with Stardust. And let's let the word for the week be open. Let's be open. Let's be open to the new experience and open to the new person. All right, Baruch signing off for this episode of Paradigms. We'll be back next time with more inspired, inspiring people. Until then, let's be open and be well.
You've been listening to Paradigms at paradigms.life.